Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today's video makes me sick. <laughs> this is for you, not me, because I don't like this. I don't like this game. I forced myself to um, sit down and choose my top 10 fragrances for life, which is just absolutely appalling to me, as this is obviously my passion, my love. So, yeah. So to make me choose 10 is just, <laughs> it's not an easy feat because I absolutely have more perfumes that fit into the for life category. But I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for the people. Because as a viewer, I think it's fun to watch. I enjoy watching these videos. So let's get down to it. Ugh. All right, here we go. The first one being Parfum de Marly Herod. And this was at one point in time, my number one favorite fragrance. And I don't want to do that right now. I don't know. I don't know if it's my number one now. I've already had to choose my top 10. Don't make me choose my, my one. It could perhaps still be my number one. It's up there. Let's move on. This... <laughs> the things this does to me, to my soul, my heart, my mind. This is the smoothest, most seductive, just downright sexy fragrance like ever. The sexiest tobacco fragrance I've ever put my nose on. I love the note of tobacco and fragrances and this is just perfection. It is criminal how well blended this is. It's shocking. It's a true masterpiece and Ladies, do not be steered, steered away that this is marketed towards men because this is straight down the middle unisex, in my opinion. It doesn't lean one way or the other. This is like everything I want to be, encapsulated in a fragrance. Like, this is a bit of freaking me because my ideal, perfect fragrance is a fragrance that has depth and richness, it's sultry, it's unique, it's edgy, but it's also so yummy and addictive and has some gourmand notes, elements sprinkled in there. And this is everything. It has tobacco and incense in here, but it's the sweet kind. It's not like super dry and smoky. It has an ultra smooth, mouth-watering, luxurious vanilla cinnamon, which I'm usually not a fan of in fragrances, but it works in here. It just gives it this like perfectly cozy, comforting fall vibe. Isoe Super Vetiver Cedar, just giving it this ridiculously smooth, woody base. This, I've said this before, if this fragrance, oh, damn it, my battery is dying. It's ruining my mojo. I'll be right back. If this fragrance was a person, this would be the incredibly hot person that you are seeing from the other side of the room. Like they are just the most attractive human being you've ever seen. And they are so charming, so damn charming. They're making people laugh. They're smooth, they've got class. They're funny, they have good taste, they're successful. Like just everything, everything you could ever want. They're very charismatic. And there's a part of you that's intimidated by them because they're just all that, but they just seem so genuinely nice and inviting that you're like, I feel called to go and introduce myself to them. And they just rock your world. That's Herod. So they have this electric wow factor and yet they feel like home to you. Going bolder into the straight up I'm untouchable zone, you already know, Initio's Oud for Greatness. The, the, oh. <laughs> oh, it's okay. This is actually one of the first niche fragrances I ever smelled and I had to have it immediately, which is pretty impressive because I, you know, I don't, <laughs> this is not for a, a beginner in fragrances, but I fell in love at first sniff with this baby right here. This is bold, confident, fire sign energy in a bottle. And I am all about that, okay? This is so 
so attractive, so sexual. This is still my favorite oud in my entire collection, okay? This is bold, it's not gonna be for everyone. It's unisex, leaning masculine. It just has a very dark, mysterious quality about it. Like how the bottle looks just absolutely suits the vibe of the fragrance, but it's a very smooth oud. This is not ever going to go into stinky barnyard territory at all. A little bit of lavender and nutmeg to give it this, you know, kind of herbal light spiciness, but the other star in the show, apart from oud, of course, is saffron, and that saffron really pulls in a similar way to the saffron in Baccarat Rouge 540 where it has this addictive, sweet, airy quality. This lasts like a champ. This is a beast. I overspray my perfumes, okay? I go to town. But with this, I only need three sprays because I'm already like overtaking everything when I walk in. It's so sexy and it also has this dark, leather vibe, like the leather jacket of the sexiest man. But I will say this is not, you know, like boom leather in your face like you're in a brand new car, like, you know. It just adds to the richness, the wealth of it all. This will provide that wow factor every time. 100% of the time it works every time. So yeah, you have to be into your more bold, deep, rich perfumes. To be into this, you have to be open-minded to something that's gonna lean a little bit more masculine. But if you are down with that, this is like one of the best things I've ever smelled, ever. So we've gone down the path of dark and sultry, so now we're gonna reel it back and go the real feminine route. Starting with Mikalev's Ylang in gold. <sighs> this perfume brings me so much happiness, it's it's not even funny. I want to shower myself in this, and this is a huge compliment getter for me. Like every single time I wear this, people can't help themselves, and they're just like, what does that smell? It smells like gold, baby. This literally smells like rays of sunshine beaming down from heaven, shining upon like a tropical island with crystal clear blue waters. This perfume made me fall in love with the note of Ylang Ylang. And I've been like on a whole Ylang Ylang binge. I've tried so many Ylang Ylang samples and I have found a couple that I love, but this is still my number one. Nothing has been able to top this yet. It is so creamy, perfectly, beautifully feminine. It's dainty, it has a powderiness, and the Lang Ylang has a bit of this banana facet to it, which it's very subtle. It's not like, you know, you're wearing banana, banana Laffy Taffy, no, no. But it adds this little bit of that fun, tropical, fruity feel. It has tropical fruits, vanilla, coconut, and then a very likable, soft, creamy sandalwood. And it has golden shimmers inside, so when you spray this on your skin, you are literally looking like a glowing goddess. So if you want to own one of my favorite perfumes, I do have a discount code on a 10 for the Miklef website if you are interested. My other woman in a bottle perfume is Parfum de Marly Delina. And this is the best rose fragrance I have ever smelled. I don't enjoy rose perfumes, they're not for me but I love this with my whole heart and freaking soul because this is a very modern rose. It's pink, it's fresh, dew covered, and it's also accompanied by a peony, which I love as a floral note. It's so delicate, soft, feminine. I just find it a very likable floral. It's not a floral like some others that can easily pull mature or indolic. It's just pretty. And then of course we have that iconic rhubarb and lychee. The lychee giving it this exotic fruit note that just pairs with the florals, the rhubarb, so well. It gives it a very young, carefree, fun kind of vibe. And then the rhubarb giving it a very unique tartness. That was different. That was different to me. This is also one of the first niche perfumes I ever smelled. I'm sure it's uh, many people's first 
niche perfume. And that was a vibe that I hadn't experienced before many years ago, having that kind of tart quality in a fragrance. And I wore it a couple times and I really enjoyed it every single time. But I was like, do I need a bottle? But after a couple of wears, I'm just like, I need it. I was absolutely craving it. And this is one of the most complimented perfumes of all time. Like anybody who owns this, I think you know, it's like known to be one of the most complimented perfumes. People love this. I will get multiple comments in one day from the same people when I wear this. A touch of nutmeg just in the top to give it a little bit of spiciness. Incense, a light amount, but it's there to give it that unique factor, that intrigue. A very smooth, woody base and the vanilla. The vanilla is so good. It's so creamy and delectable and then a very sensual musk. This is something you can wear all year round, any occasion, whatever it may be, whether it's to seduce someone or to go to a work meeting. It literally fits everything, every vibe. Now when it comes down to my favorite vanilla, it's a constant toss up between three. Guerlain Spiritus Double Vanille, Mikalef's Note Vanille, and Kaoli's Vanilla 28. But for today, this is what I'm feeling. If I'm narrowing it down to top 10, this is what I'm feeling at the moment. Guerlain Spiritus Double Vanille. This was in my first top 10 for life. And then for the majority of the year, once I discovered Note Vanille, that kind of took over as my number one favorite. And now in this current moment, I'm feeling this is my number one favorite. You guys, it it's a toss up all the time. I was this close to choosing Kaoli's Vanilla 28 over this as well. So it's, it's all over the place. But there's something so special about this one. The way this warms up on my skin is addictive like no other. People tell me I smell like vanilla bean ice cream when I wear this and boy do I ever smell edible. This is a vanilla that will please everyone. It pleases the niche lovers because it's not straight up vanilla. It has notes to make it something special, but it's also going to please people that are into your more designer perfumes because it's so likable and it is mainly just vanilla. This is like an organic vanilla. It's not vanilla extract like straight from your cupboard. It's obviously sweetened, but it has that raw, real kind of smell to it. It has a very likable resinous feel from Benzoin. It's nothing too deep or dark. It's not like a heavy amber at all. It gives it just a little bit of this powdery feel. A sweet incense that I find incredibly addicting, okay? You have different kinds of incense. We have churchy incense, we have smoky incense, and then we have the addicting sweeter kind of incense. That's what's in here. Um, a little bit of cedar giving it that woodiness to ground it. A lang, -a -lang making it a little bit more brighter, more creamy. It is so good. Literally people that never compliment me will compliment me on Spiritus de Blivini. By the way, I'm not including discontinued fragrances or fragrances that are very hard to get in this video because that's just not fair. But if I were, you best believe that Guerlain's Gourmand Coquine would also be in this video. Talking about another vanilla, this perfume makes me so happy. Like, it truly feels like it was meant for me. This could easily be my signature scent, the Seven Virtues Santal Vanille. Literally my top two favorite notes right here, sandalwood, vanilla. I actually had someone comment um, on my perfume collection video from a while back and it was like, woody, 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 vanilla, vanilla, woody, vanilla, woody, vanilla. And I was like, yeah, and? Yeah. Santal Vanille is a blast of dry sandalwood and then a vanilla, not a huge amount, you can smell it of course, but it's there to smooth, round out the edges, make an otherwise very edgy perfume a little bit more inviting, even though this is definitely like a cool person's perfume. Anyone can wear this, this is totally 
straight down the middle unisex. I absolutely adore the fresh, spicy quality that's in here. We have cardamom, another favorite note. Pepper has resinous qualities from olivinum, myrrh, and then coconut. Coconut milk, giving it this creamy quality. Not too much because I'd say this is more of a dry fragrance, but you can pick up on that creamy coconut milk. And this is actually a woody fragrance that works excellently year round. You can wear this in hot weather and it's not going to be like, th this is too much. Like this is too rich because of how fresh it is. It's like a dry, fresh wood. You have those fresh spicy notes, the coconut milk, giving it a little bit of that like uplifting vibe. It works and it's also very powerful. I only need a couple sprays. I find myself accidentally overdoing it often and I take over the entire room, but that's okay. But that's okay. So it works beautifully in cold weather as well. It's just, oh, absolutely incredible and the best thing from the Seven Virtues, in my opinion. Absolutely incredible. I'm like this fragrance is number one fan. I, I don't think you could find another person that is more obsessed <laughs> with St. Albany than I am. Now we are moving into my clean girl era, the vibe I cannot get enough of. The first one being Le Labo's Another 13. And I actually just ordered my third 100 milliliter bottle yesterday of uh, this. So that'll be coming in a couple days. Yeah, both my boyfriend and I are absolutely obsessed with this perfume. This is going to be sticking around forever, truly, for life. This is the scent of your really hot freaking boyfriend's cologne and you're wearing his shirt and it's just so sexy. You can't get them out of your head. It's like this scent is just ingrained in your memory. And it also has a very cool European vibe to it. Chic, modern, European. It's just range. You're getting that drop of man's cologne. It's so addicting and so freaking, so freaking sexy. It's not trying to be. Like Oud for Greatness and Herod, you can tell. They're... <laughs> They're absolutely trying to be sexy, but this is that understated sexy. You smell clean. It's the best blend of Isoe Super and Embrette. Ambergris giving it this, like a little bit of this salty vibe, like your skin, it's a little bit salty. Fresh, woody, the love affair I have with this. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I think third bottle will probably, will probably let you know. And my other, favorite your skin but better scent by the way lilabo's another 13 lasts impeccably will last forever this is a softer fragrance so this is definitely a skin scent but it's the best skin scent i've ever found clean reserves skin <laughs> this has the most addictive praline note but it doesn't smell edible, like a realistic gourmand, like, oh, this smells like food I want to eat. But if you smell this on someone, you're going to be like, I want to eat what? I don't want to bite you. A gorgeous, fluffy, clean, feminine musk, a little bit of salt and leather just to give it this little bit of like this sexy undertone. It's very clean. It's like a freshly showered, naturally beautiful woman, puts on her slightly sweet scented body products and she's just impeccable. It is so comforting. This is perfect for bedtime snuggling up. Um, you can wear this to work if you're looking for something subtle but so pretty. An everyday scent for the spring and summer. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Then we have Byredo's Baldafreak. And I had a subscriber tell me before I bought this, Anna, you need to get the 100 ml bottle because you're gonna want it. And I'm like, I'll be okay with the 50 ml. No, she was right. I'm almost halfway through this bottle. And it's crazy to me that this is in this video because this actually took me months, like a long time, maybe about a year, something like that, to completely fall in love with this fragrance. I didn't get the hype at first. It was a citrus perfume to me. 
but there was something about it just like on that initial try that I was like, I'm going to revisit this. I want to understand what people are getting from this. So every couple months I would revisit it and every couple months I would like it a little bit more. And after several times of trying it, I was like, I get it. And now it's here in my freaking top 10 for life amongst all the perfumes I have. It's crazy. This is my favorite citrus perfume, hands down, that I've ever smelled. I so understand the uniqueness that this has. The vetiver is so cool. It makes this so cool, that dry, woody character. And then this fruity element makes it so addictive. The cedar and dry vetiver makes this so edgy, cool, different. It's clean, fresh, musky. And then what makes it so addictive to me, like the one note that really drew me in was whatever that's making this fruity. There's a fruity, addictive sweetness that's in here. And the woodiness with the citrus with the addictive fruitiness like that's it the winning trio chic to the upteenth degree and i could easily fly through this bottle and wear it every single day but i've been holding off because i'm like damn girl i'm going through it and i'm afraid i really dislike repurchasing so many freaking bottles but i will do it I will do it because I must have it. So if this did not wow you on first impression, I encourage you to keep trying it because it's literally one of my favorite things ever now. I am always in the mood for this. And my other one, my other by Rado. These, oh, the obsession is real. It is so real. G Water. Listen, I don't care if it's this or if it's another perfume that smells extremely similar to G Water, but either way, I need this scent profile in my life for the rest of my life. The chokehold that Juniper Vanillas have on me is unlike any other. It has become one of my favorite fragrance note combos of all time. I can't get enough, and I absolutely love how the pine and juniper is done. I don't know why I was about to put Um, I don't know why I was about to put the cat back on here because I, I will keep smelling this. I don't know, it's satisfying, this magnetic cap. It's beautiful, is it not? Anyway, I love how the juniper and pine is done in this fragrance because it's not like a shot straight up your nose of that greenery. This is giving you that fresh forest air vibe with a very dainty, powdery, gorgeous, smooth vanilla, creamy, soft sandalwood, a translucent amber, a little bit of incense. That has been featured in a lot of these fragrances today, I'm realizing. I love a supporting incense note. Usually incense dominated fragrances can get a bit much because I feel like they kind of focus on like the smoky, maybe churchy incense. But as a backup singer, I love her. And then a super fresh lemon bergamot at the top. Oh my gosh. I could have everything smell like this. I I want to get the hair spray. I want to get the lotion. I want to get like all the products that are scented G water. This could totally be my signature scent as well. But this is more of like that I'm put together soft, feminine, dainty, chic vibe. And then something like this would be like... Hi, I'm your fire sign, edgy, cool girl. And luckily for me, I don't have problems with uh, these two lasting. This will last all day on me. And then this one will last like about five hours. But yeah, those are my picks. Those are my absolute, very favorite top 10 fragrances for life. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already, if you wanna see me in any more videos. I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.